Hey guys, Jack here and today we're going to be looking in depth at Battlefield 1. It's the day after the reveal and it's safe to say that many gamers are hyped for this release after seeing the first trailer yesterday which is currently sitting pretty on 9.5 million views and 600,000 likes. Obviously this has been a crowd pleaser. It looks like something fresh and exciting in the modern AAA multiplayer first person shooter space, something that players have never really experienced before, and the reaction has mimicked that. We're going back to a simpler time and analogue world which is colourful, destructive and very intense. So in this video I'm going to elaborate on all of the behind the scenes details that we got to see at the show yesterday and break down the trailer for all of that juicy information in there. There is a lot to talk about though and I want to keep each section concise so I thought the best way to do this would be to segment each part of the game so here goes. The behind the scenes video started off by showing us different theatres of war we will fight in and it had a lot of actual first person gameplay in there too. So we know that the multiplayer will include forest maps in the forest of Argonne, desert maps probably set in Africa or the Middle East, we'll also be fighting in the Alps, French villages and the Italian mountains so that's four or five confirmed locations for multiplayer. It then went on to describe the classes you'll play as in the new game, Assault, Medic, Support and Scout and each class got a little bit of video and voiceover describing what their roles are. So the Assault has changed, this is now going to be the SMG guy carrying stuff like an MP18 for example, a very close quarters class with some kind of anti-tank grenade which we got to see in the trailer, perhaps also carrying shotguns, there was a couple of clips in there of shotguns tearing people up in trenches and blowing open wooden doors. In the trailer we we do actually get a glimpse of this gun known as the M1917 shotgun. The medic class will be the guy dishing out the med kits and reviving fallen teammates. In the trailer we saw him use a large syringe to revive a teammate and they'll probably use mostly semi-auto rifles. The support guy will carry light machine guns like the Lewis gun, he'll also be dishing out ammo and repairing vehicles. And finally the scout, he's the spotter sniper class and there was a really sweet clip of a sniper taking out like 3 or 4 enemies with an optic side mounted sight. You can actually see this very briefly in the trailer here. Other optic sites were available in World War 1 so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of those too. There was a satisfying ping headshot sound when he blew someone's head off too. And then at the end of the sniper clip we see an enemy player up above him on a hill throw down a stick of dynamite and detonate it with a plunger. So there we have Battlefield 1's equivalent of C4. The footage was very gritty, intense, it looked absolutely incredible and this was real gameplay with no HUD. It then moved on to talk about the melee weapons in the game, reinforcing the fact that in BF1 engagement distances are much closer, you're going to see the enemy a lot quicker and more frequently and as such there's a large variety of melee weapons to choose from. We saw the spiked trench mace that looks brutal, swords, spades, obviously we see that in action in the trailer too, the bayonet charge as well, we saw a clip of a guy charging into an enemy soldier with a bayonet on the end and kind of like sticking it further into them on the ground, it looked absolutely brutal. Dice here are obviously trying to convey the brutality of this war and as such melee weapons will have different stats so some might have a longer reach but slower speed to attack for example and they want each player to find the melee weapon that suits them the best. The takedown animations look very quick too so hopefully we don't have any stupid prolonged counter knife like animations as we do in BF4. Moving on to vehicles, you saw some of the vehicles in the public trailer, biplanes were a big part of it too, the Red Baron here in his tri-wing airplane, dogfights in this game are going to be insane, flying through trenches overseas, at one point in the trailer you can actually see the wings of one of the biplanes come off and it begins to spiral out of control, it'll be really interesting to see if this is BF1's version of a mobility hit for airplanes. Also two seater planes confirm perhaps the gunner on the back here, I'm assuming the pilot would have a front light machine gun too. In the behind the scenes presentation we also saw bombers though dropping ordnance on the battlefield which wasn't really clear in the public trailer. The airplane combat looks really exciting to me personally. No lock-ons or flares, you've got lots of cover to fly in and around of loop-de-loops and machine guns on the front, it just looks so freaking cool. 
As for tanks, there were a couple that we saw, the Mark IV, but also this one, the A7V Sturm Panzerwagen, a German tank, and it was confirmed that you can get an entire squad of five people in there, so I'd guess one driver who has maybe a main cannon and then four different gun positions. Tanks were scary in World War One. They were a pretty new thing when they were first introduced, and the soldiers fighting against them didn't really know how to combat them. They were OP, basically, so I expect these to be super hard to take down in multiplayer teamwork will be required it'll either be run away or work together to defeat the odds also the duck tank made a showing in the offline footage the duck tank is not its actual name i just think it looks like a duck its actual name is the ft17 and this was a light tank used by the french in world war one maybe two positions in this one as it's a bit smaller there was also this thing, which is basically a box car covered in armour driving around the desert. This is an armoured car with a Vickers body, used by the British apparently, known as an IGA-1. It had a light machine gun on the top turret. I'm guessing this is the equivalent of a light transport vehicle for World War One. And a cool little fact for you that the devs told us, tanks in this game have different nuances, depth and uniqueness to them. They all feel and play very differently, so we're going to get a much wider spread of speed, weapons and damage instead of the usual M1 Abrams versus T90, which we see in BF3 and BF4, and they handle very similar. Also, of course, how can we forget the Zeppelins, warships and the armoured train? Being able to shoot down on targets at the ground from a Zeppelin and also firing artillery into the battle from the sea, driving through a level on a train going from point to point, exciting times indeed, but not much more detail than that. Destruction was also heavily focused on in the live stream and behind the scenes trailer too, and in the trailer you saw some of that on the forest level and also as the plane crashes into the windmill, and by all accounts, Alexander Grandel and Lars Gustafsson the two dice devs were alluding to the fact that there is a lot more destruction in the game micro destruction big destruction stepping away from those scripted revolution moments and bringing it back to a more dynamic style that we saw in games like bad company 2 where players can level entire buildings if they choose to and strike a nice balance between gameplay map design and cool explosions they also focused quite a lot on team play and playing the objective gameplay, mentioning a persistent squad system, which basically means that you can squad up with four other people to make a squad of five, and you'll always be in that squad and not removed from it as you were sometimes in BF3 and BF4. So you can focus on playing together with your friends, having a good night of gaming and hopping from server to server while still staying in that squad, so you're not going to have to worry about being split up. Hopefully they've got a solid system in place for that which takes into account auto balance and matchmaking moving on now to weapon customization obviously a big part of the battlefield games that many people are passionate about but you also have people on the other side of the fence who feel like the choices are overwhelming and hard to understand so apparently the game will have some sort of weapon customization in it this was the dawn of modern warfare and the soldiers were trying all sorts of new things with their weapons modifying them in ways that offered differences between them Lars actually talked about this in depth in a great interview with Lutin which I've linked down in the the description below lots of details in there but basically weapon customization will be unique flavors of each weapon i'd expect to see different sights or scopes prototype weapon mods that were actually real back then and of course bayonets too as we saw in the trailer some of the miscellaneous stuff i wanted to mention now that guy in the armor suit with a machine gun i mean holy crap that just looks awesome they actually did use armor plates in world war one did they look as badass as this probably not he's basically a knight in shining armor at this point let's be honest but this is a hollywood version of world war one I, I suppose through a modern lens flamethrower dude as well looks pretty sweet no information on how you actually get to play as these guys but they do look op compared to normal soldiers so perhaps some sort of hero class that comes in during a battle gas and gas masks you saw a snippet of this in the trailer gas is very much in the game and was used a lot in world war one the counter in video game land is of course the gas mask which you can see the soldier strapped to his face after engaging the enemy with his lewis machine gun there were stationary machine guns and aa guns in the behind the scenes footage too these were used in world war one for anti-infantry anti-vehicle and anti-air flat cannons that sort of thing to take out aircraft we had the artillery firing as well could this be the commander mode we're seeing here? Maybe a commander calling in an artillery barrage on the enemy perhaps? 
perfectly timed with the music of course. Now dedicated driver and pilot classes, we didn't actually get too much detail on this one but after mentioning it in my video last night and browsing the threads on NeoGAF and Reddit and through YouTube comments, this seems like it's gone down really well with the player base. If you spawn in a plane, you're going to be a pilot and maybe you've only got a pistol. If you spawn in a tank, you're going to be a tank driver, that's your role and if your vehicle dies, you leave the tank as a tank driver. That just makes sense to a lot of people and if that's how it is in the game, it looks like like most players would be pretty happy with that. I have to mention horses as well too. Horses are a pretty big deal. You've got this interesting situation in World War One of old versus new. In some theatres of war back then you did actually have people using horses and cavalry charges with swords. So can you put C4 on the horse then? That's the most important question surely. I don't know but we did see a short clip of someone carrying a weapon whilst riding on a horse in the behind the scenes trailers so I fully expect you'd be able to use horses in multiplayer. It's dice that are make in this game, they know what people want, they will have it in the online game for sure. And the girl on the horseback, we probably know that it's something to do with Lawrence of Arabia now, as we know that it's in one of the packs from the digital deluxe version of the game, more on that later. Some weapons that we saw in the videos now, the Lewis machine gun, the Colt M1911, the Gewehr 98 rifle, the MP18 in the Kiart, the Mauser C96 in the Kiart, the M1917 shotgun in the trailer, otherwise known as the trench gun, and also this bad boy here. This looks like a Tank Gewehr 1918, which according to Wikipedia, the best source of information on the internet, was the world's first anti-tank rifle designed for the sole purpose of destroying armoured targets. As you can see, it has a bipod there though, so perhaps you have to deploy this first before you can fire it. It does look pretty massive and something like that would be almost impossible to fire accurately from the hip. As for the campaign, we didn't get much information on that behind the scenes, but what we do know is that it's going to tell the stories of several different people from all over the world and look into how the First World War affects them as a person and also the world around them and how it changes. It will be focused on only in battlefield moments, offering the player way more freedom and creativity to complete missions. With this being a World War One game, I expect that dice are going to pull on the heartstrings and there's going to be some emotional moments as of course, this is based on reality this stuff actually happened and perhaps we'll even get to play through accounts of real stories that happened during the war 64 players was confirmed too everyone expects that i suppose but now we know for sure now there were some additional details we can find out about the game if we go to origin and take a look at each edition of the game with the deluxe edition we get several things that are interesting here seven days early access to a new free map drop Hello, this is amazing news, free maps guys. Still no confirmed word on if there'll be a premium or season pass model, but I think it's pretty awesome that free maps are going to be a thing. New content and free maps is great and it doesn't split the player base up. Moving on, the Hellfighter pack based off the Harlem Hellfighters, the first African American infantry unit. This will be themed items based on those guys. The Red Baron pack inspired by the famous fighter pilot, so I wouldn't be surprised if he crops up in the single player. A Lawrence of Arabia pack, items and weapons based on the adventure of T.E. Lawrence, so that's the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire. And finally, five times battle packs, yes. Those guys are back. Be interesting to see if they've changed this all because most players really don't like the current system in BF4. But it does say here that they will include weapons, vehicles and other gear. So that would be new I think. From memory I don't recall battle packs ever having weapons or vehicles in them. Except for the knives we shall see. So then that's about all I wanted to cram into this video. I know it's a long one but I think I've covered most of the bases there. There is an excellent trailer breakdown video you should watch by a guy called Flackfire. He clearly knows a lot about the the history of World War One and offers some very interesting insights into the uniform, weapons and equipment seen in the public trailer. Link for that is down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up that would be amazing. Thank you so much. If you didn't a thumbs down and please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I will be creating plenty more videos on Battlefield 1 so subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. As always cheers for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.